Welcome. Thank you so much for being with us. My name is Kate Dobson. I work in international admissions here at IUPUI. Uh, and we're super excited today to answer your questions about um, how to prepare before you come to IUPUI, what to know about housing, how to get housing, uh, learn a little bit about the students' experience here, any immigration questions, any other kind of scholarship questions. Hopefully we can answer them all. So uh, with that, I'll just ask my co-panelists to introduce themselves, starting with Bo Yi. All right. Hi, my name is Bo Yi Lim. I'm an international student from Malaysia. Um, I'm right now a senior studying mechanical engineering. Nice to meet you guys. Hi, I'm Helen Lockhart. I work for Housing and Residence Life, um, and I am excited to answer all of your housing questions. Good morning, everyone. My name is Estella Kite. I specifically work with the Welcome Services in our office, as well as pre-arrival questions and our International Peer Mentoring Program. So thank you for being here. Hi, my name is Chelsea Carroll. I'm the Associate Director for International Student Services here at IUPUI. So I kind of oversee the people who provide immigration advising services um, to our students once you get here. So I'm happy to answer any of your questions on that. Awesome. So I think I just want to start uh, quickly by saying IUPUI stands for Indiana University, Purdue University, Indianapolis. Probably you know that most of the people attending are fully admitted. Uh, but still, I found some of our admitted students aren't entirely sure that that indicates that your degree when you graduate will come either from Purdue University or Indiana University, uh, depending on what you study. I think we have mostly engineering students in the room. Uh, of course, there are students from other programs as well. So if you're studying engineering here, you're getting a Purdue degree. Most of the students in this room so far have also earned a merit scholarship. So I think we find that a lot of students are attracted to our campus because they get the big names but they also get some, some financial assistance through the merit scholarships. And also something that's unique about IUPUI is even though it's a big university, you know, 30,000 students, hundreds of millions of dollars for research funding, you have a lot of attention um, from faculty, from staff. So you get, you don't feel lost in the numbers. Um, you can kind of, you can see we have several different departments here who are willing to talk to you one-on-one, -on -one, answer your questions. So I think that's something pretty special that we have here. Um, but I'm staff here, so maybe what I should do is ask an actual international student, if you don't mind uh, starting before we start to take questions, what, uh, what, how did you choose IUPUI and how has your experience been so far? <clears throat> okay, so um, I chose IUPUI for several reasons. I guess one of them is the location. It's a pretty good place. You know, it's a, a city, you get what you want. Um, there's an airport right nearby you can fly into or fly out to for vacations and it's close to other big cities like chicago cincinnati you know and also like of course the names as well like i'm studying ip i'm getting a purdue degree and i don't have to go to a purdue like the real well the actual purdue campus to do that because here it's it's so much cheaper and also going off on that i think um IUPUI provides a lot of good scholarships and I'm sure most of you have that scholarship. So like for me, I got a scholarship as well and it really, really helps um, as an international student because the tuition fees here are pretty expensive. So I think that really helps. And also, I guess <clears throat> another reason I chose is um, I think the International Peer Mentoring Program. I think it's a really, for me, it's really, uh, it's really interesting because it actually it's one of like, the, I, I would say like your first friends in the States. And if you don't know anyone in the States when you first come here, I think it's a very, very good resource to go to. So I think that is like, those are the reasons why I chose IPY. Yeah. Awesome. That's great. Thank you. Um, do you and maybe Estella mind explaining a little bit more what the International Peer Mentoring Program is, just in case it's not evident from the name? Sure. Um, I can start and then you can talk about your experience. So the International Peer, Pro Peer Mentoring Program is a program open to undergraduate international students. And what we do is we connect you as an interested international student with a team of mentors. And so what those mentors do is they, <clears throat> they help you find the resources on campus. They help you acclimate to IUPUI and studying in the United States. They help you um, achieve your academic goals. Um, they, they're here essentially for your success, whatever that may mean for you. And a lot of what they do is one-on-one -on -one conversations about what it is you want to experience here at IUPUI, what would make you the most successful, and any resources or tools that your mentor can give you to help you be successful. Um, so with that, uh, we have a lot of 
socials, we have a lot of events, we have a lot of fun things that helps our international students feel more welcome here um, and understand the culture of IUPUI and, and how to meet American students and other international students to, to get those connections started. The great thing about us is that we connect you in May to an international student, uh, to an international student um, peer mentor team. And so what that means is that if you're looking for housing, if you're looking for um, transportation help, all of those pieces before you arrive, your mentors are there to help. And so that's what Boyi was talking a little bit about, um, where our mentors are helping every step of the way, starting in May, all the way to when you arrive, and they stay with you up until you finish your first year at IUPUI. Boyi, do you have any experiences to add? Yeah, so um, I guess since you get paired in May, I think it's really helpful, like they would start, they would contact you and ask how it's going, and then you would just go off with questions like, you know, any questions, um, like they are really friendly and helpful, so they are there to answer any questions, um, like what transportation, you know, what, how, how, how should I go about, about when I get here, and like housing questions, and even some questions like, oh, is there like a concert hall here in Indianapolis? So that's really helpful, like for me, like going into a school, like into a, into the states without knowing anyone, and then before going in, I like. You know, kind of know any, kind of know someone there. I think it's really helpful. Um, it kind of it calms my nerves a lot, and I don't get that nervous coming here alone. So it definitely helps a lot. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Um, I see we have one question in the chat box. Other people feel free to to throw <laughs> your questions. Um, maybe as we gather a couple, I'll ask. Helen, if you don't mind, kind of, so you represent housing here, mm -hmm. what kind of housing op uh, options are there and what are the benefits of living on campus? Absolutely. Well, so we've got several different options, um, some that are specific to first years only and then some that are open to um, any student at IEPUI. And so um, we'll talk first about the first year options. We have um, University Tower. It was a um, suite, it was a hotel, a 10th floor hotel renovated into um, a residence hall for first years. All of those are double and triple rooms um, that have their own bathroom inside the room. Um, so those are, those are very popular among first years. Our other first year facility is Ball Hall. It's our most historic facility. It's also our most economical. Um, it is uh, going under renovation. And so during that process um, for this upcoming year, we have one additional opportunity for first year students, which is called our Riverwalk Shared Suites. And so what we've done is we've converted um, our apartments, Riverwalk Apartments, into two person and four bed, two person and four person um, suite style units that still have all of the amenities of um, the traditional halls with the beds, the desks, the dressers, um, but then the additional um, opportunity to have their own living space, their own kitchen, their own laundry facility right there in the suite. So it's kind of a good hybrid mix of the traditional style and the apartment style um, into the suite style. Um, we also have, um, for any, any student, we have North Hall, um, which is our newest facility, and it was built with um, student collaboration in mind. So there's over 30, um, uh, collaboration and um, community spaces for students to take advantage of. Oftentimes, uh, there's there's TVs all over that have HDMI hookups, and so we'll find students either gaming or watching movies or you know having their laptop hook up, hooked up to do homework in that facility because they have so many opportunities to do so. Um, and then we have our Riverwalk townhomes and apartments, and those offer just a little bit more of an independent style living um, with still that support system of the RAs and the programming and all of that stuff. Um, living on campus, um, the benefits, uh, they're, um, there are many benefits to living on campus. We, you, it puts you right in the center of everything going on at IUPUI while you still have the opportunity to take advantage of urban living because you're in downtown Indianapolis and you're within walking distance of several cultural institutions and, and all of the great things that IUPUI and Indianapolis have to offer. Um, in addition, it affords you the opportunity to take advantage of um, internships and part-time jobs and things like that with companies that IUPUI partners with because they're just three blocks away, if that makes sense. So lots of great opportunities both on campus and then around campus because you are located centrally um, to everything that, that, that you can take advantage of. 
Awesome. That's great. Um, when should they apply for housing? Right. So this is the big thing. Um, priority consideration, um, the priority consideration date is March 15th. Um, if you apply after that date, there is, we can't guarantee um, that you, we can't guarantee that you can get housing, but historically speaking, those who've applied by the March 15th priority consideration date, we've been able to accommodate non-campus housing. Now that doesn't mean that we only get to March 15th, it varies per year, but we've found that March 15th um, is really the date where um, historically speaking, we've always been able to get through. It's important to note that um, we can only, you can only apply for housing once you've been accepted to IUPUI, so um, you have to have your username and password to do so. Um, at the time of application, there is a $50 application fee that's due. That's a non-refundable fee um, for the processing of the application and getting you in that line to, to get a housing contract. And is that, I got a qu this question over email, is that binding? And by binding, I mean if you pay that $50 application fee, you have to come to IUPUI. That is absolutely not binding at all. It is just, that fee is for the processing of the paperwork and the getting you in the queue. But um, if you decide not to go to IUPUI, or if you decide to go to IUPUI and not live on campus, um, there's, that is not committing to anything. Um, the next step in that process is um, as we start offering contracts for your specific space, that's where you actually make the commitment to live on campus. There's a $400 prepayment due when you sign your contract. Um, and then that prepayment um, is a credit to your Bursar account. So um, if you then end up deciding not to go to IPUI um, or deciding to live off campus, there's a $400 contract cancellation fee so that $400 prepayment really just goes to offset that fee. Um, there are instances where maybe you've signed your contract and you've paid your fee, and then for whatever reason you're unable to attend, um, not of your own choosing. Maybe I think we had a question earlier about whether or not your visa gets, um, if your visa gets denied or something like that. We have an appeal process, and historically speaking, anyone who's had an issue like that come up has gotten their $400 back. Fantastic. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, I see one question and then lots of questions about money and scholarships, so we'll, I promise we'll get to those, but one question about how can we find details about various housing options? Absolutely. If you visit housing.iupui.edu, um, that's our website. It's going to show you photos of, of what we have to offer. It's going to talk to you about our processes and um, our timelines and things like that. So you can get a lot of information there. And then if you don't find what you're looking for, you're welcome to contact us. You can email us at reslife, R-E-S-L-I-F-E, at iupui.edu. Or you're also welcome to give us a call anytime at 317-274-7200. Seven, sorry, seven, two, zero, zero. Yeah, perfect. So I've added those into the chat box also, so we have those in writing. Uh, the website, the email, and the phone number. Beautiful. Thank yes, you so much. Course. Thanks. So uh, we have some questions about uh, scholarships. How do I know if I get a scholarship? <clears throat> the biggest scholarship that you can earn happens at admission, and it's based on your, your secondary school marks, how well you've done um, throughout your, your schooling as well as usually SAT or ACT. We do have a few scholarships based on TOEFL or IELTS. Um, there are different tiers. So basically, whatever you qualify for, you earn. So how do you know if you get that? Well, you have to apply to us. All of you have applied. That's why you've gotten this invitation. Um, but if we don't have all of your academic documents yet, we can't tell you what scholarship you might qualify for. So make sure that you have everything submitted. If you have questions about what to submit, uh, you can contact another office, um, OIA under at IUPUI.edu, which I just put in the chat. Uh, that will help you. Um, th those are my colleagues who review all of your academic documents uh, and your, receive your SAT scores, and we'll tell you what your scholarship could be. Um, <clears throat> we had a question about, instead of a bank statement, can you submit a solvency certificate? So uh, typically we're looking for even just a letter from the bank um, to say how much funds are in the account. I don't know, if Chelsea, if you have anything else to add to that. That happens on the admission end, but Chelsea's an expert. Yeah, so 
Um, the rule for this is set by USCIS and the federal government. Um, before the school can actually issue the Form I-20 to the student, we have to have um, proof of liquid assets equal to at least a year of study and housing costs. Um, generally speaking, like I said, it has to be liquid funds. Um, so depending on what that certificate of solvency is, if it's um, a certificate from your bank that states that you currently have um, funds in excess of a specific amount, or if they have a certified letter from your bank that says the current account holder has accounts totaling the following amount, things like that are generally considered okay. Um, it's one of those things though where sometimes we have to see it before we can answer whether or not a document's okay, given the fact that each country will sometimes have slight nuances in how their banks or financial institutions issue these kinds of documents. So. That's really helpful. Thank you. Um, so as far as how to earn the biggest scholarship, I see a few questions about I got one, I want a bigger one, or, you know, I was told I need to show a certain amount of dollars to get the I-20, but I would like a bigger scholarship. Again, the, those initial scholarships happen at the admission stage. So you all should have my email address too uh, from the invitation for this. So feel free to send me an email or, as I said, that OIA under at IUPUI.edu. The best thing to do is include your university ID number and ask what's the deal. It could be that your, your GPA, as we've calculated it, uh, or your SAT or ACT score, one of those is a little bit low and you're not getting the higher award. It could be that you already have the highest award. Our highest award that we offer throughout the year is $15,000 which is about half off of your degree, which for, for a public university uh, is, is a pretty, pretty good discount. That's a really nice award. Obviously, you still may, your family may need more. Uh, so a couple, a couple things about that. Number one, if you do improve your grades and if you do not yet have that highest award, it may be possible for you to submit your grades by the end of this year, if you're currently in your final year of secondary school, for us to re- uh, evaluate them for another scholarship. So nothing's guaranteed, as I said, it, that counts on your SAT plus your grades, but that could be a possibility. That's one thing to keep in mind. Um, another thing to keep in mind are scholarships that you might get once you come to campus. Uh, or someone asked about internships. So research internships, um, service learning on campus, these are different ways that you could earn some extra money on campus. So I think that what I'd like to do is see if, um, maybe we could start with IPMP. There's a stipend that comes with that, a scholarship that comes with that. Is that right? Mm -hmm. So that's something that probably is, is helpful by, now you have to do work for it, right? You don't just sit there and twiddle your thumbs. Um, but that's one good way to, to, get, to get some extra money uh, as well as to add to your resume. Um, as I mentioned, research assistance, assistantships on campus. I said we have a lot of kind of STEM students here. Um, so our faculty from your first year are looking for students to help with that. Um, Chelsea, do you have anything to say on internships or research? Um, yeah, so as F1 students, you automatically have the ability to work up to 20 hours per week on campus just as part of your status. Um, so you can work in any on-campus position that you can find that you would like to work in. That would include things like, you know, working at the library, working as a tutor um, through the tutoring center, different opportunities like that that are readily available. Um, beyond that, if you'd like to do an internship off campus, you could do that after you've completed your first year of study um, by participating in what is called curricular practical training or CPT. Um, and of course, we could help talk you through all the details of that once you are here and kind of thinking about that as a possibility. But a lot of our students do choose to do um, CPT off-campus internships at some point during their undergraduate or graduate work here. So Great. So that answers one of the questions. Can we do an internship in our first year? You just heard from Chelsea. Only if it's on campus, guys. <laughs> <laughs> and how about for an H-4, someone is on an H-4 visa, can they work on campus? Um, if you are an H-4 visa holder, you do not have automatic work authorization. Um, and unless you're an H-4 spouse, you're not eligible for an EAD. 
Um, so if you're married to an H-1B, um, depending on where that individual is at in their process of applying for permanent residency, they might be eligible for an H-4 EAD. EAD is just a short way of saying employment authorization document. It's when the federal government grants um, an immigrant or non-immigrant the ability to work in the United States. Um, so again, um, that one, you're probably not going to be able to work unless you change status to F1. If you're currently in H4 status and you're interested in possibly changing to F1 status, you can contact our advising section um, and we can help you with your options for doing so. Okay, fantastic. Thank you. A um, couple questions here. One, yes, the scholarship that you received should be mentioned in your admit letter. So if there's no scholarship in there, Probably you didn't earn one. Could be that we've overlooked something. You never know. So you feel free to send an email to oaunder at iupui.edu so we can double check and let you know. Um, someone said uh, for the financial support form, um, it says that we still need to receive the full amount. You're looking for a scholarship. Again, make sure that you have submitted all of your academic documents. I don't think you have. I think I know your file. I think we're still reviewing. So maybe sit tight, hold on, um, while we review your academic documents to see what the GPA is and what scholarship you might earn. Also feel free to send an email directly so that we can speak directly to your situation. Um, a question about, uh, back to kind of housing and pre-arrival. So if a student does the housing by March 15th, but he's still not entirely sure and thanks so just i know you sent this via email he's not he's still looking at his options should he do the rest of the pre-arrival checklist in i start um, or can he wait on that and maybe if you can say a few words about what that is for people who haven't uh seen it yet sure so starting the pre-arrival checklist does not commit you to coming to iepui it just helps you understand all the requirements before you do decide to come to IEPUI. So I always suggest that if students are still considering, if you're considering IEPUI, um, I would encourage you to get started on the pre-arrival checklist because through that you will learn a lot of our different processes and a lot of the different things that you would need to do to get ready to come here. Um, so in terms of what is on the pre-arrival checklist, um, you through the pre-arrival checklist, you can learn about placement exams, you can learn about orientation, you can sign up for the International Peer Mentoring Program on there, um, you can learn about immunizations, you can learn about um, almost everything. I yeah. mean, it will, it will, the pre-arrival checklist is literally your roadmap for mm -hmm. all of the sort of like housekeeping or paperwork or in this case online work items you really want to have done before you set foot on campus um, so again we can't stress enough how valuable it is for you to go through those steps even if ultimately you decide that IUPUI is not the right place for you and you decide to go elsewhere some of that information will even let you know things that you should be thinking about at whatever institution you're planning to attend in the United States so definitely check it out and we hope it's helpful for you um, a couple of questions. Do, do, can they do citizenship verification if they're 17 years old? I don't know if that's part of the pre-arrival checklist. It is. Um, we, you can wait and do that one when you get here if you need to. Okay. And we can, we can walk through that. Okay, great. So for whoever asked that, that's, that's great. Um, and then immunizations. Someone had asked about how to know, yeah. Yeah, so the immunization information is all in the um, pre-arrival checklist. There's actually an online form um, that you will go and complete with all of your immunization information. And just so you all know, these are the ones that are going to be required, and they're required of all incoming students, not just our international students. Um, but all students at IUPUI need to show proof that they've been immunized for measles, mumps, and rubella, or MMR. They need to make sure that they've had the varicella, which is also known as chickenpox vaccine, um, tetanus, diphtheria, or pertussis. A lot of times that one's called Tdap, um, if you've heard of it that way instead, and then also meningitis. Um, so you'll need to show proof that you've had those vaccinations. Don't worry, if you haven't already had those vaccinations, the health center here on campus can assist you with getting those. Um, so if you don't have them yet, 
you can work with the health center professionals here at IUPUI to make sure that you're fully vaccinated so that you stay safe during your years here at IUPUI. Thank you. Um, Helen, could you, to go switch back to how do you talk a little bit about, we have something called the residence Residential based learning. Thank you. Residential based uh -huh. learning communities. Can you talk about what that I is? I would love to. Okay. We actually, we have, um, within all of our facilities, we have um, a programming focused groups called residential based learning communities. And there's these little sub communities inside each of our residence halls, and each hall has different um, ones. We have 15 of them. Um, the reason I wanted to make sure to bring these to your attention is because while we do, um, the March 15th uh, date is the priority consideration date. We, the residential based learning communities, those applications get processed all the way till June until the space in that residential based learning community is full. We do have one in Riverwalk called International House. And so if you, um, if you apply late, if you get accepted after March 15th, if you, um, if you don't make a decision and um, wanna apply for housing until later, um, that's a great option is to look at those residential based learning communities. We have major based and theme based. Um, we have STEM, women in science, health careers, um, liberal arts, um, and then we have, um, and, and many more. And then we have theme based ones, which are International House, um, Diversity Enrichment, and um, Community, which is for our LGBTQ plus students. So um, I wanted to make sure to bring that to your attention because International House is a great opportunity um, for international students to live together with um, American students who want to learn more about um, international um, uh, relations, international affairs, things like that. So it's a great opportunity to kind of live together with similar interests, but it also is an opportunity if you um, apply after that March 15th to um, potentially still get um, placed in housing. So I wanted to make sure to bring that to your attention. Mm -hmm. That thank you for doing that. I will say, uh, from typically in about April, late March, early April, um, we from our international admissions office travel overseas, meet students. Typically, a lot of them have not yet applied for housing, and we're saying, "Oh my gosh, it's past March 15th. You know, you need to apply because we know all the benefits that come when you live on campus." Um, so that's a great, great way to not only find a spot, but also find a spot with a community there in the university. Um, Bo Yi, do you mind talking a little bit about, I know you came as a transfer student, right? Mm -hmm. So that your experience may be a little bit different. We may have some transfer students here, um, but how did you find your community here? Like, how'd you find your people? Okay, so uh, <clears throat> um, I came in as a transfer student, a sophomore, and um, it's, Initially, it's pretty difficult to find a community, but um, I guess I was lucky. I um, My first year, I stayed on campus. I actually stayed in I House, International House. So oh. that actually was a very, very good experience. <coughs> like I said, um, like Helen said, it's a, it's a place where you can meet a lot of different people, Americans and international students. So that's where, that, that's a community I'm part of right now, or last year. And then right now, I'm staying in a different residential-based learning community called the Purdue House on campus. So it's a um, community for mostly engineering students. So as engineering students, we're under Purdue School. So that's Purdue House. So like my roommates are engineers. People above me are engineers. A lot of people there are engineers. So that's a different community I'm part mm -hmm. of. So um, in terms of finding community, I don't think it's a very big issue. It's just that you have to be a, you'll meet a lot of people and you'll find that some people are right for you, some people are not. So that's the thing. And also like by uh, being part of the international peer mentoring program, I think that helps because um, everyone or most of the people in that program are there to meet, like to meet new people, make new friends, and then you know just kind of make the whole transition to the U.S. life easier. So like you'll make a lot of friends there. So I don't think that's anything to be worried about. Yeah. Awesome. Cool, thank you, it's perfect. Mm -hmm. um, a couple more kind of like procedural questions. Uh, oh, actually, I'm gonna jump to this one. Is there a pure vegetarian restaurant available on campus? Thanks for asking. So a lot of our students uh, are, we, we talked about all the housing. Some of our students keep a halal diet. Some are vegetarian or pure veg. Um, we have, and I, someone else can probably speak to this better, but I don't know. Helen, do you want to take that? Start Absolutely. <laughs> so um, our dining services, 
they um, they do all that they can to accommodate um, uh, most kinds of dietary restrictions. Um, when you live on campus, you have access to. Um, uh, when you live in one of the traditional facilities, you're required to have a meal plan, and that meal plan is our tower dining option. It's um, basically unlimited uh, eating at a, um, it's, they have all different kinds of areas with all different kinds of food. And they try to make sure that there's a diverse representation of food there um, that meets all kinds of dietary needs. And then if you find that what they offer is not, um, you can request certain things. And so you can get a lot more information about the meal plans, um, the accommodations for dietary restrictions and all of that at their website, which is mealplans.iupui.edu. Mm -hmm. You know, and that reminds me, because we've gotten that question in the past and someone asked a question for uh, coming from India, what's the best, uh, what's the best flight path to get here? Um, and you all may have some some ideas, but also I think I, I told the student that plugging into students who are already here are good for both of these questions. So what's the best way to get involved with that community before they're even on campus? Sure. Um, so I would highly encourage students to get involved in our Facebook groups. So we have um, one Facebook group called IUPY International Students. And if you type that into the Facebook search, it should come up with the uh, with the group. And so there is, um, I think, almost 2,000 students um, that are um, checking it and connecting with each other. And so from there is usually a good place to get started and posting questions and getting connected with other students who might be coming from the same location you are. Um, I would say specifically with our Indian student population, um, Daisy Jags is really active on Facebook and in other locations as well. Um, and so you can search them as well on Facebook. But starting off with the International Students Facebook page, I think would be a good start to meeting other people um, from different countries and perhaps even where exactly where you're coming from. Um, but with that said, I did ask one of the mentors if they had any suggestions for some of the best flights from yeah. India. Um, and this is his, his words, so I will read what he sent me. He said, it depends on your budget. Uh, some of the best ones are Emirates, Swiss Air, um, KLM, British Airways, and he suggests Emirates because it only has one stopover, so that makes it a lot more convenient than the other flights. Cool. Thank you. Um, I am going to several questions about different topics. So um, thanks to everyone. I may not be the best, best moderator, so thank you for your patience, and thanks for if you have to repeat a few things. Um, if a student lives off campus, can they still take advantage of the meal plan? Absolutely. Um, there's a required meal plan um, that's automatically added when student lives, students live in uh, the traditional halls that require them. But meal plans, they offer several different levels of options um, to get different types of meal plans, depending on what you think your needs might be. And then you can adjust that um, within the first few weeks of every semester. In addition, um, you can pay cash at all of the dining locations. So if you decide not to get a meal plan, you go to Tower Dining or to eat in the Campus Center, find you love it, you, you do not have to have a meal plan to do so. So there's there are a lot of dining options on campus. And then um, all of them also take the Crimson card. So if you do um, uh, Crimson if you add money to your crimson card, what, I can't remember what that's called, like crimson, crimson cash, thank you. Um, if you add money to that, you can use that um, at all of the dining locations on campus, and then actually at several air surrounding restaurants um, that surround IUPUI, and also the Kroger um, that's right next to campus. You can use um, that crimson card um, cash there as well. Right, which is also your student ID, so you're going to have that card and you're going to be using it all the time anyway, right? Um, Document, you may have mentioned this, Chelsea, but what document is necessary for, what kind of documentation for vaccination verification? You can find all the details for that on the um, e, like online form. So our office is not in charge of immunization compliance. We just help provide information to you all. Um, the registrar's office here on campus is actually in charge of compliance for that. Mm -hmm. um, I do know that in addition to putting in the dates that you've received the vaccinations, you are expected to upload documentation from your doctor showing that you received those documents, you received those immunizations. 
I, however, I'm not an expert on the very exact needs for what is required for those. Mm -hmm. I would say generally if they are in a language other than English, if you could also provide a translation because chances are very high that the person reviewing them will need to see them in English to be able to verify the information. So. Great. And how about the international tax questionnaire if you don't have a social security number? Is that new? So if you don't have a social security number, you'll instead be eligible to get something that's called an individual tax identification number. Um, and then typically what you'll end up filling out is FINIS, F-N-I-S. Um, you'll receive information for doing all of that, though, once you're here. So hang on. <laughs> um, you'll get all of that once you're actually located in the United States. Yeah, I think. Um... I think that this is a really good point because one of the benefits of a large university is that you have an expert in everything. And I think part of being a student here, you have to really learn how to navigate that because we can point you to the right direction and we each have our own expertise. And sometimes I think that can be frustrating for students. Um, but it's again, the benefit is that someone else will have exactly that answer. Um, I don't know if you have, Boyi, as a student here, if you have any thoughts on how you've navigated just the large university and different departments? Um, yeah, just a few, I guess. Like, okay, yeah. first of all, if you have some friends here, which, like, some friends here, that would be, like, that would be awesome, you know? Um, it's easier to navigate, like, to go to events with someone else other than yourself, but, but making friends here are pretty easy, especially with mm -hmm. um, international students. If you join IPMP, the peer mentoring program, you know, or if you live in I House, even, and also, um, I guess navigating, like in terms of, I guess looking for more opportunities outside of like school, I guess um, you just have to be like open minded and just kind of talk to everyone that you want. That let's say if you like an internship or if you like a job or like a research opportunity like don't be afraid to talk to the professors because uh, most of them are pretty nice like if they if they are interested in you and would like you to take them for instance um, a research assistant i think they are pretty happy to do that um, i got one of my two um, grading greater jobs just by asking my professor hey do you need a, do you need someone to help you right now so it never hurts to ask here on campus and i usually go by that like it never hurts to ask Beautiful. Um, I also wanted to again plug the International Peer Mentoring Program. <laughs> um, and so whenever you have those needs, whether you might need an expert in taxes or an expert in something else, um, being connected with a mentor team is really helpful because they can let you know where that resource is located. They can even walk you there. Um, so Boyi hasn't mentioned this, but he's currently a mentor and he helps international students with a lot of those questions that they have. And so the mentors don't don't they're not the experts okay i'm not saying that they're going to have all the answers for you but what i am saying is that they know where you can find the answers and they can get you um, to that location um, however that might be best for you um, i will also say that uh, both the international student advisor who you will be assigned to once you arrive here on campus and then also our front desk staff here at oaa are great for resource referrals as well, because while we might not be the specific subject matter expert on the question that you have, we can help refer you and get you connected with the people on campus who will answer the question as well. Um, so again, IPMP is awesome, um, but even after you are finished with IPMP, um, after your first year, if you still have some of these questions, you can also always just use the general OAA or Office of International Affairs as a resource as well. And we also got a question a few back about Summer Bridge, which I think fits into all of this. Um, who would be best equipped to talk about Summer Bridge? What's the specific question? Uh, what is Summer Bridge? Can you tell me more about it? And that's for freshmen, first year freshman students. For any transfers, you will not know about that. And that's okay. Um, yes. So the Summer Bridge program is mandatory for all our um, first time um, international students, F1. First time first year international students. First time first year international students. Um, and so what that is, it's a, a approximately a week to two weeks. Um, there's some changes happening right now, so I can't specify. So a week. Um, where you will be in a classroom with a bridge instructor who will um, 
they they provide a lot of resources about the university about getting um, uh, transitioned into the college life. So going from high school to college, what that means, what that looks like, how studying might be different. Um, they'll connect you to the resources on campus. They answer a lot of questions that first year students have. Um, and so that bridge course that you start off with, you will also have a first year seminar um, for that first semester that you will um, continue to have courses with those same students. Um, and you'll have a mentor in there as well that will assist. Um, but essentially, the, it's to get you acclimated to the university, to get you oriented, to help you transition to IUPUI and studying in the United States. Um, if I can touch on that briefly from the housing side, um, housing, um, it, it is not mandatory for Bridge, um, obviously, because m some first years don't live on campus. Um, if you are doing the Bridge program, you have to complete the request um, for early arrival to move in early to make sure your room is ready and to make sure your contract is extended for that additional week. Um, when you do that, it also um, then sends a message to meal plans um, that if you are living on campus um, that, that you get that meal plan for an additional week as well. So it's just important to know you have to um, complete that form. Um, as you complete your application, you'll get all kinds of emails from us letting you know about upcoming dates and things you need to do. Um, so that information will be in there. But um, when you sign up for Bridge, it is not um, automatically added to your account. And so you'll want to make sure that you apply for it. Bridge move-in is August 17th. And then Bridge starts, that's a Saturday, so yeah, the 18th, the, uh, 19th. the 19th is when Bridge starts. Um, so just if you're kind of keeping track of dates, that's when that move-in would be for Bridge students. Okay, fantastic. Um, if I'm missing any, any questions, please feel free to re-ask them. Uh, you know, I've seen a couple about the academic subject, and someone asked about AP chemistry uh, a while ago, and does that mean you would need to take chemistry for four years? Probably not. Depends on what your major is. For a lot of the academic questions, what can I do a major and a minor? What classes will I be taking? When will that be decided? Well, you'll meet with your academic advisor during uh, orientation. orientation, right? Which is around the same time as, as bridge before the semester starts. That's when you're going to be able to find out uh, all of those details and set that schedule. Anything else anyone has to add about that? Yeah, and again, uh, that's another uh, point that, as we said before, there are subject matter experts, people, you know, you don't want me to help you with chemistry, you want someone in the chemistry department or in your major, let's say you're an engineer, they're going to know how many uh, courses you have to take. Cool. Um, <clears throat> does Bridge start on August 11th? No. Oh, August 19th. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. It's gone down to one week. Um, so. For any of you who are really, really well organized and go-getter students, you've probably already looked and tried to spot when your orientation information is on our website. Um, Bridge just changed the way that they handle it. It used to be a full two-week process, um, and everything started earlier because of that. Um, it's now been changed to a one-week process. We just received newly confirmed dates on that. So for those of you who have already been on the orientation website for international students, that information is set to be updated within the coming days. Mm -hmm. um, so you will see updated information on there. I think an old PDF on the website was using kind of best guess dates based on historical information and said it would start on the 11th, but it's actually starting the following week. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks. Um, how uh, how do you pay tuition? What's the mode of payment? Can it be paid in installments? This is another question where there are there are people who man the the bursar's office would manage that. Uh, in short, you're billed after you register for classes. So after you meet with your academic advisor, choose all of your classes. You have a deadline by which to pay. Um, Sorry? It's always, so the deadline is always the 10th of the month following Perfect. when when you're billed. Um, so that's the deadline. Um, you can pay through a variety of methods. Those are all outlined on the Bursar's website. There's also an option for international wire transfer um, for payments, uh, which is sometimes really useful for international students, especially if your parents are going to be paying from accounts that are set up in the home country. Great. And I think something that we talked a little bit about orientation and someone asked about parents coming. 
we, we often have parents come for orientation, right? And I know we've had sessions in the past at orientation where someone from the bursar, someone from housing, someone from uh, registrar, maybe. I don't know if there's anything else you want to say about that, if your parents are planning on coming for orientation. Uh, sure. So I will just touch on it briefly. Um, we welcome parents to attend the international orientation. Uh, many students find it's helpful in getting them oriented and moved into their apartments or um, on campus housing or whatever that may be. Uh, during orientation, we usually have at least one or two um, small events for parents. And so historically, what that has been is the registrar is housing. Um, insurance information and uh, bursar um, and so we have usually it's like a panel or at least some location where you can ask questions of all of those experts and so for parents um, we we have a specific event for those parents usually and that's where parents can ask all of the questions um, about how to how to do things related to those topics with that said we usually also have a welcoming reception for parents um, so we do welcome you to that. We would love to have you there. Um, and so what that is, is we invite academic department representatives from the majors that you have been admitted to. And so often that's engineering, that's um, sciences, that's um, depending on liberal arts, perhaps. And so your parents and perhaps you as well are able to meet some of those academic advisors, some of the deans in those um, schools, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so we do have events for parents, and we do very much welcome parents. Um, if you do have a parent who's interested in attending, we would love to know about it in advance um, so we can um, include those parents on our communications to inform you about those events that are happening. Fantastic. A question for Helen, how do I, do I have to find a roommate on my own or how does the roommate situation? Ah, that's a fantastic question. So students who um, have signed housing contracts um, can request um, a roommate between June 1st and June 30th. Um, we highly recommend that if you know you want to live with a specific person, you apply at the same time, you make sure your application um, preferences match completely, including residential-based learning community, um, if applicable. Um, so we highly recommend you do you do those two things to help ensure that you get the roommate you're requesting. Um, if you do not um, request a roommate, then uh, you'll be randomly assigned. We don't do roommate questionnaires because we find that often sets um, students up to fail because they already have expectations. If you um, and your roommate both indicate on that um, survey that you are um, both early risers and then you get there and your roommate finds they were only an early riser because their mom was waking them up every day at 6 a.m. But now that they're on their own, they really like sleeping till noon. It set you guys up already for con conflict and some failure. So what we do instead is you're just randomly assigned um, based on your contract types. And then our first six weeks of programming are focused on roommate relationships, a contract for the room where you guys um, set up the rules that you agree to on quiet hours and guests and all of those things that can be potential conflicts. And then we work with you um, on ways to establish and maintain a healthy um, roommate relationship and how to work through any issues as they arise. So we find that's much more successful than doing like a roommate survey um, just because again it, it, it teaches you to work through conflict and how to manage expectations regardless of who you're living with. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, we've also we've gotten a couple questions Bo Yi, I'll probably ask for you to take the first the first answer here about um, yeah several questions about what is day-to-day -day life like? You know, everything from internet access to the facilities, libraries, transportation around campus, to just activities on and off campus. That's a huge question. Okay. Could you start? Yeah, sure. Um, so day-to-day -day life, I think for a student is basically there's a, so for starters, there's a shuttle bus that goes around campus. So if you stay at <clears throat> places like Riverwalk, uh, which is close to the river, um, or like you know, somewhere else, you want to get to the other side of campus, there's always shuttle buses so you don't have to actually walk across campus. Um, and then in terms of internet access, I think that's, well, the campus is pretty well connected. Wherever you walk, you will have internet, so don't worry about it. And uh, internet is pretty fast too, so you can you could stream Netflix, you could do whatever you want with that. Um, 
and what else was it? Oh gosh, uh, libraries. 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 Yeah. Li well, library here is pretty cool. Um, I think it just renovated last year, so we have a lot of new additions, a lot of um, individual learning spaces, um, mm -hmm. um, spaces with uh, very big whiteboards, um, even TVs that you can do like your own work or like group work for. And uh, yeah, I would, rec I would highly recommend a library because it's uh, like a really good place. Like, it's quiet, like it has a quiet floor and a floor for discussion. So if you are you like to work on your own, there's quite floor to go to. If you like to work with people, um, have a discussion group going on, you could go to a di different floor. So um, it caters, caters to a lot of different needs that we want. So yeah, it's a pretty good resource. And I think um, any book in the, if they don't have your book, you can ask them to order it, they'll order it for you, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that's a huge, when, when, when I first meet with students, I tell them the cost of the university, their jaws drop. Um, and even though we have, an, we have an average cost for universities and we give scholarships, but the reason is because all of this, it's, you're not just going to study and leaving, your entire world is there. As you said, internet, libraries, any sort of individualized research you wanna do, community, it's all here within this universe. Um, so maybe we could talk a little bit more about activities, um, like what kind of extracurricular clubs, what can you do for fun? Okay, I think that's what the yeah, question was it? Yeah, okay. sorry. So, for clubs, there's like, I think there's over 400 clubs here, professional societies, fraternities, um, what else, different um, interest clubs, like um, there's a gaming club on campus, you know, there's a lot of different clubs, if you're an engineer, there's engineering clubs, different engineering clubs, if you're into science, there's a chemistry club, neuroscience club, so there's a lot of different clubs that will cater to your need, and um, they all do different things, and there's like service-based clubs where you do volunteer work. Um, and as for activities, if you like going to the gym, we have a gym on campus, um, if you like, if you like like play games, we have a game room on campus. Um, that's a pretty popular place for a lot of students. That's they have a they have ping pong table, pool table, you know, PS4, Xbox over there, and you'll find a lot of things to do. I think um, other than just studying, there's um, let's see what else. I think. Yeah, I mean, for places to do things, I think that's about it. But if you, um, <clears throat> and then also we have a, what we call SAPB, a Student Activities Programming Board. They are very, very active on campus and they do a lot of um, events. I think like they have events almost every week. So like for last Friday, they had like a event where it's like 1970s team. So they had like roller skating and big inflatables, you know, like free stuff and, you know, a lot of things going on and they have this almost every week, especially since you guys are coming, if you're coming in the fall semester, there'll be more events like this. And I think for the first, second or third week, we'll have a weeks of welcome uh, where we'll have a lot of um, different things for new students and that is a really, really good time to uh, meet people and just get some free stuff, you know, um, and just do some activities, yeah. But um, apart from that, I think day to day, it's basically, like for me, I'm a senior, I do a lot of studying, but other than that also, um, like of course I go into the gym and like if you like playing some sports, we have a um, natatorium, uh, the natatorium or we call it a jungle. So basically, um, I think every weekend it's open, so like you, you can play basketball, or volleyball, even if you want to play soccer over there, it's, yeah, it's up to you. So we have a lot, for, we have a lot of spaces to do what you want to do. Yeah, fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead, Helen. Okay, thank you. Um, so as, as part uh, housing is part of the Division of Student Affairs. And so um, uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about the services that are offered there. Um, I know uh, he just alluded to, to lots of them. But um, while your academics is key and while you're here, um, the Division of Student Affairs is um, offers um, departments and opportunities to develop um, to support you while you're here and while you're focused on academics. So there's CAPS, which is um, a counseling center for students. There's um, a pause pantry, which is a food pantry for students who maybe are having some um, food insecurities and things like that. But we also do um, SAPB as part of um, the Division of Student Affairs, as well as what's called the DEN, which is kind of the keeper of all of those over 400 um, organizations that students can join. And if you, I mean, if you really love basket weaving and you find that there's not a basket weaving club, you can start one through the DEN. Um, you can register that. You can then um, use the DEN's marketing resources to get participants for this basket weaving club. So um, while there are so many already established, 
you know, needs and, and interests vary as people do. So if you don't find one that you connect with, you're always welcome to start one. Um, the Campus Center, there's always events going on in there. Um, uh, there's always tabling um, different organizations, student orgs that are, are looking for more participants. And like he mentioned, Weeks of Welcome, there are two specific, there's two fairs directly about involvement. Um, if you live in one of the residence halls, highly recommend you take advantage of all the RA programming. We have a residential curriculum. And so um, all of these events are fun ways that then tie back to learning outcomes. And so um, uh, like how to like different adulting tasks and how to get more engaged with your community and all of those things. So all of these RA events um, are great ways to get out of your room, to meet people, and then to learn new skill sets. Um, but the Division of Student Affairs, if you visit life.iepui.edu, you can see all of the different things that um, the university offers to support you while you are um, working very hard on all of your academics. And, and to help you, uh, the, the divisions kind of um, motto is preparing you for life. So you've got the academic pieces. And so really, um, the division's goal is to help bring all of the other aspects of, of living um, uh, into, your, into your scope and to help you through all of those processes as well. And then the other really cool thing is that Indianapolis is in downtown, I mean, IUPY is in downtown Indianapolis. So we have buses that run through here that then can take you out to the mall, to the grocery store. So the restaurants um, and the different cultural institutions, there are um, buses, there's um, bike shares, um, and then and things like that that can take you to all of the cool things that downtown Indianapolis has to offer. That is perfect. Thank you so mm -hmm. much. I think, um, I don't know if we have more, more questions. Uh, I, I think we are out of time, actually. So uh, if you have any questions that I didn't answer, um, what I'll do is I'll send this recording to everyone who came with the main emails for housing, for any immigration questions, for uh, pre-arrival questions, uh, what do I do, airport pickup, things like that. Um, I, I want to say just a huge thank you so much for attending and for your really fabulous questions. Uh, I, I think IUPUI every year, we have over 145 countries, sorry, not over 100, we have about 145 countries represented on our campus, so it's hugely diverse, and um, every year I think the students who come just add to the, the vibrancy we see on campus, the things that have been mentioned, um, as well as uh, we have 90% success rate when students graduate. We didn't get too many questions about that. Usually when we talk to parents, we get questions about jobs and salary, and our students have been really successful and that way happy to share more statistics on that. Um, in short, I think the message for me would be keep an eye out. We may be traveling to the region where, you're, where you live, uh, especially if you're in India or Dubai. So we'll be sending uh, some communications to meet with you and your parents. Um, finish your, your admission paperwork if you haven't so that you can apply for housing by, before March 15th. Um, any other messages from you all to send them away with? Well, I would just say um, definitely get started on your pre-arrival checklist, which you can find on istart.iu.edu, mm -hmm. um, and that will get you connected to all the next steps that you might need to know about and get started on. Perfect. Bo Yi, um, any last words of wisdom as the student, the honored student here? Um, I don't know. Just where, I mean, wherever you go, even on IPU, I think just enjoy the process. Yeah, but I hope to see you guys here. Beautiful. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yay.